The most influential mortal man in my life was my dad. No question. The second most influential man in my life, I would say, was my grandfather on my mom's side. They were both very hard-working men. They were both very well educated. My dad was a beekeeper, so was my grandfather. My dad was a gardener, so was my grandfather. My dad taught me how to work because it was just what we did. We always had chores. We always had weeds to pull in the garden. My grandfather taught me how to work because by the time I came along, his body was failing. My dad would do everything he could himself before having to call out a professional. Probably because he couldn't afford to do anything but this. My dad would change the oil in the car because he had to, not because he wanted to. My grandfather was raised in Kentucky. He was a hillbilly. My grandmother was not proud of this. But knowing what I know now, I'm very proud of my grandfather's heritage. My grandfather told me one time that the first time he tasted moonshine, he was 11 years old. He also told me that his dad made it very clear to him that he would work his fingers to the bone, providing an education for my grandfather and his brothers. But the moment one of my grandfathers and or his brothers got arrested with anything to do with moonshine, my, gra my great-grandfather would let them sit and rot in rotten jail. One of my grandfather's brothers became a warden, and that was the family joke. He was the only one that ever went to jail. Both my grandfather and my dad made it very clear of how they felt about their families. Family was everything to my dad, right up to the day he died. I grew up in a family of five boys and two girls. The oldest and youngest were girls. Even though myself and my brothers grew up fighting on a fairly regular basis, at some point along the way we became very close friends. My dad helped us realize that we didn't always have to have the same opinion about things, but it was important that we recognize that family was long term. My grandfather also felt this way. My grandfather was adamant that we would get together as family on a regular basis. My grandfather was a quiet man because he stuttered, but he was usually the smartest person in the room. Now growing up with four brothers, we were always fighting over something. My dad was so busy with church and with school, he was not around a whole lot. My mom was left to deal with us boys. I can remember my mom using the wire end of a fly swatter, hitting my two older brothers to get them to stop fighting. I can remember my mom breaking a broomstick over one of my brothers again to get them to stop fighting. Myself and my brothers grew up fighting. It's just what we did. We never wanted to permanently injure or maim each other, but the worst fights I've ever been in were with my brothers. Yet still, at some point along the way, my brothers became my best friends. Now my two sisters sit at the top and the bottom of our family, 20 years in between. I don't remember a whole lot about my oldest sister because she was grown and gone by the time I came along and remember anything. But my little sister, I do have a lot of fond memories of her. I remember her coming along and my poor mother just sobbing over this beautiful little baby girl that she'd wanted for so long and she finally got. If I recall correctly, she wasn't about to let us boys hold this perfect little baby girl for quite some time. 
Now one of the other people that I first took inspiration from nearly 20 years ago was a man named Dick Prennicky. Now I took inspiration from him because of his decision to walk away from civilization and live off in the woods and live sustainably and do it on his terms. I read everything I could get about this man's life. I read his journals. I watched his documentary multiple times. I still watch it quite regularly. He was a brilliant, brilliant man. Again, very well educated. He was a craftsman. He was a very hard worker. Late into his 50s, he was in very good shape because of his decision to use hand saws and manual tools to build his cabin in the woods. But the one thing that I'm not inspired by when it comes to Dick Prinicky's life is his decision to go live by himself. Everything I do here on our house is for my family. I enjoy working alone and I prefer to work alone, but in the back of my head I know what I'm doing is for my family. My grandfather and my dad both taught me the importance of family. And at some point along the way, as myself and my wife had five kids, I also learned that there's really nothing more important in life than family. I learned that the responsibility that comes with raising five kids can be tremendous. When myself and my wife decided to take on this monumental chore of trying to live life on our terms in the woods, I don't believe I fully understood what it would take. Now initially my intentions were not to do this on my own. My intentions were to borrow the money and subcontract what I could, but try and keep costs low and do what I was comfortable doing. When the financing didn't come through because our home would be completely off grid and most banks want nothing to do with this, we decided that we could still do it. I then decided I'll do everything I have to do myself and I don't have a problem doing this. Even though I don't know all of these trades, I knew I could learn them. I knew that I would make mistakes, but mistakes never scared me. The thing that scared me the most about this process was the idea of not pursuing this. Now the closer we get to getting this house finished, the more I think about my family, the more I think about the memories that I hope to create with my wife and kids. I know we'll have challenges. I know we'll have tremendous challenges, but I'm okay with that. Because someday I hope to sit around with my wife and kids and maybe I'm too worn out to get up and do something and maybe I have to have my grandkids come help me mow the yard like my grandfather did with me. And maybe I'll have the opportunity to teach my kids what my dad and my grandfather taught me. And my hope is that when I reach this point where I'm physically worn out, and most of these projects that I wanted to get done have been finished, but more than anything, my hope is that my five kids and my wife will sit around and tell stories about the memories that were created here at Red Poppy Ranch. So while finishing up the roof, and finishing up the electrical, and finishing up the plumbing, and finishing up the drywall, and the other things that are left to do, at times seem daunting. I know that I just have to put one foot in front of the other and get this stuff finished. Most of this time while we've been building our home, we weren't sure if we would have all the finances needed to finish it. But I knew that I could find it. I knew that if I had to take time away from the house, to go work and save money up, I would do this. The harder we work, the more this thing seems to meet us in the middle. So we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're looking at paint colors. We're looking at cabinets. We're trying to decide on the countertops and the flooring and things like this. Now finishing the roof is one more thing that I can cross off the list of things that need to get done. Now I should have the roof completely finished in just a matter of days. And I can't wait to bring the wife and kids up this weekend, have them help me do some cleanup around the place, and just talk about the future at Red Poppy Ranch.
I'm basically done with the rolled roof. Um, I've got uh, the ridge left to do in the morning. Uh, my feet hurt too bad to keep working and I need to get into town for my five-year-old son Reed's for, first uh, t-ball game. And uh, I'd like to be there for that. So tomorrow I should be able to uh, get started on the 10. Um, I've got everything up here ready to go. Uh, we had rain and snow yesterday. Uh, so I, I worked on the uh, finishing up the electrical and some little tiny bit of plumbing and gas that I needed to get done. Uh, but I can't wait to be done with this roof and not have to get up there again. I found my harness, started using my harness. Uh, my wife continued to raise concerns about that and I decided to uh, just grab it and uh, wear it and use it. So it hasn't been too bad using that. but. Uh, uh, roof's about done. I can't wait to be done with that. I can't wait to see how this tin's going to turn out. I think it's going to go up pretty fast and pretty good. Um, weather looks great the rest of the week. It's almost too warm. The uh, um, the rolled roofing is starting to tear a little bit easy, so I'm hoping I can get it finished first thing in the morning and then start slapping the tin on.